the Riders and Eskimos at Commonwealth Stadium. Or not, there are still those in the West who haven't forgiven Matt Dunnigan for becoming an Easterner. But all is forgiven today, sir. Welcome to the booth. Uh, thanks a lot, Steve. It's great to be here, and I'm glad I'm in neutral territory with these two teams lurking around the corner. And who better to talk about the two quarterbacks today than Matt Dunnigan? And let's start with Kent Austin of the Riders. Kent Austin, I'd like to say this about him. He's quickly becoming the most prolific passer in the CFL. Why? Because he's getting great offensive line protection. And the second reason why, he throws the ball so quickly, he doesn't let the defense have time to react. He's, he's quickly becoming the best in the CFL. It's a joy to watch. Nine years in the CFL, and I think that man right there, Damon Allen, who runs the Eskimos offense, is playing some of his best football. Talking to Ron Lancaster yesterday, and Ronnie says Damon is playing his game. The last five weeks is due to Damon's success. He's sprinting the corner. He's an underrated passer. He's putting pressure on the defense, both with the pass and run. And I think if the field is greasy, then Damon Allen may have an edge with his running. Barry? Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Matt. Conditions pretty much ideal. There is a little bit of wind blowing, but temperature is three above. It is the Riders and Eskimos coming up next on CBC. You're looking live at Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton on an almost perfect afternoon for this Western semifinal showdown. There was a point uh, this morning where we didn't think Don Matthews would be on the sideline. Spent the night in the hospital having his stomach checked. There was no question that Ron Lancaster would be prowling the sidelines for the Edmonton Eskimos. 34 and 20 record with the Eskimos. One and two in playoffs. And Saskatchewan will kick off to the Eskimos to get this semifinal underway. Well, Edmonton's looking for a quick get up. Hope for a big return here. They take it up the right side. Floyd still on his feet and finally upended as he gets into Saskatchewan territory by Farthing. A 50-yard kickoff and a 32-yard return by Floyd, and that gives the Eskimos excellent field position. Steve, that's exactly what they were hoping for to start this game off with, a great return. As a quarterback, you couldn't expect better field position. And look at the numbers that Damon Allen has put up on the board, especially late in the season. See, this is what I'm talking about. Damon being uh, one of the most underrated passers in the CFL, posting numbers like that, you got to respect his passing talents. First and 10 from the 52, and Edmonton go to their running game. That's Floyd. That's Edmonton's favorite play. That's just an off-tackle play there by Lucius Floyd. Called a 45 search. They got man-to-man -man, They got man -to -man coverage in the, in, the, in the secondary. I'm sure Damon's getting that information right now. Allen calls the shots. He's got Souls and Floyd in the backfield. These are the receivers he'll be throwing to. Jay Christensen back in the lineup, and that's the offensive line that'll be working in front of Damon Allen. Rod Connor's going to have his hands full today going against the one against Gerald Bayless lining right across him. Second and six SMOs from the Saskatchewan 48-yard line. Allen puts it up, and it's complete. That's a great call in this situation. It's a quick pass. Set Saskatchewan employing a three double cut defense. Meaning the corners are cutting. They got three people deep. Damon has a quick pass, throws underneath, and they pick up a first down. What a great front four that is of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, led by the great Bobby Jurison. Middle linebacking core, a little inexperienced, a little young. If there's a soft spot in the Riders' defense, it could be right there. Certainly the defensive secondary is a solid one for the Rough Riders. And right now, they're working against Damon Allen and the Eskimos. First and 10 from the 38. Here's Damon doing what he does best. Spin the corner, putting pressure on the defense, both with a pass and run. Picks up about nine yards there. Great play calling thus far by the Eskimos. Carlton Lance comes over to make the stop on Michael Soul. It's important for Damon to get in the flow of his game, and at this point, he's done. He's completed his first two passes. He's handed the ball off. They picked up two initial first downs, which is great tempo to start this football game with. A gain of nine on the play. Second and one Eskimos. We're early in the opening quarter. The ball on the 29-yard line of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. 
Allen keeps it himself and picks up the single yard with the quarterback sneak and another first down. The drive continues for Edmonton. Uh, it's just a simple quarterback snake uh, picking up the first down, make sure that they um, maintain uh, the drive and keep the flow of the game going. First and 10, Eskimos ball with the Saskatchewan. Edmonton Eskimos come into this game having won five straight. They are on a roll. Saskatchewan have won three straight. So two teams that have momentum. The Eskimos have the early momentum right now. First and 10 from the 27. Tries the left side, picks up a yard or two. That's just a delayed draw. They got they got man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. Now they're in a good situation offensively, second and six, and uh, you know that's that's the quarterback's dream being in, in, in that situation because the defense has to both respect the pass and the run. Lucius Floyd, the former Saskatchewan Rough Rider, picked up by the Eskimos. And what a good pick that was. Second and five. From the Riders, 22. Allen puts it up incomplete, looking for Souls. Lance was covering on the play. That's a simple search play. Edmonton has been running that play for years and years and years. They slipped the back out. They got a hot to the slot, and they got the wide receiver on a pattern. Damon reads the hot. Nobody's covering Souls. Delivers the ball just a little bit high. You mean the play's that old that you ran it when you were here as a oh, quarterback? Thanks a lot, Steve. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's a, that's a play that's uh, very successful in the CFL, and a lot of teams do run that. Edmonton's been running it for years, and they've had great success with it. That, that time, the ball was just overthrown a little bit. Sean Fleming will attempt the field goal from the 30-yard line. No score. Opening quarter, Riders and Eskimos. Looked like, that like was it blocked. was partially blocked, and it, I believe, went just sort of sneak through the uprights and that gives the Eskimos a 3-0 lead but it looked as if the ball may have been ticked. It, it certainly did and uh, I know that Sean is uh, shaking his head but they he got three points on the board it's a great drive for uh, the Eskimos to start this game off with. Uh, it's tough to see there but uh, obviously the ball had somebody uh, in its way there on its way to the, through the goalpost. John Fleming has had difficulty kicking here at Commonwealth Stadium. As a matter of fact, he did something that's very seldom done. He worked out here a couple of days before this playoff game to get more used to this field. First and ten for the Riders. Austin puts it up, airing it out for Fairholm. It's complete. Fairholm to the 42-yard line of the Eskimos. Austin with his first play goes to Fairholm. Wilson forces him out of bounds. That's the situation there where uh, Kent Reed in the cornerback. The cornerback sucked up on a quick out route. And we had a, a six pattern going to the top, which is a corner. He's wide open. Here's the, here's the end of that play where uh, Mr. Fairholm sneaks in behind the secondary there. Big game, great way for Saskatchewan to start this game. A 36-yard pickup and moves the ball down to the 41-yard line. The Eskimos, where the Riders are now first and 10. Again, Austin from the shotgun. Gets time, fires over the middle, Elgard complete. Elgard dropped at the 25 by Dan Murphy. Great hit, great hit. You know, they've got to, they've got to bring a point across to those uh, Saskatchewan receivers. You come in this area, we're going to light you up. We're going to make you pay for a catch. And that's what they did right then. A 36-yard pickup to Fairholm, followed by a 16-yard pickup to that man, Elgar. There's Kent looking off to his left and delivering the ball. Nice, nice shot across the middle there. Elgar makes a leaping catch. Good situation to be in, first and 10, plus 25. What a great start to this game. Completes the pass, flag down on the play. Wilson on the tackle on Fairholm. On the offense number 81, the penalty is declined. The penalty is declined. It's second down. I think I agree with that in that situation. Only against Elgar. Let's see if we can see it. There it is. That's holding. That was pretty nitpicky as far as I'm concerned. Let those guys play ball out there. Ray's a physical ball player, and he's going to be doing that the rest of the game. And if they continue to call it, they're going to be a lot of penalties. So it's second and 11 for the Riders. The ball on the Eskimos 26-yard line. Again, Kent Austin out of the shotgun. Five-man pressure. And he was looking for Saunders. Saunders was down on his knees, couldn't make the catch. Pressure there from Willie Plus. Jeff Fairholm going to a corner route, the first play they started the game with. Uh, 
he goes to the corner route and he kind of slips and loses his balance a little bit and Ken had to come off underneath and Saunders had slipped as well. Riders That's why Ken winner. didn't throw the ball to Jeff there. Robo kicker Dave this, Ridgeway. This looks pretty close to uh, a flashback to 92 right here. Ridgeway puts it up and this game is tied at three. The field goal kickers have gone to work early. Saskatchewan three, Edmonton three, first quarter. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders getting set to kick off to the Eskimos. Lucius Floyd and Gizmo Henry Williams standing just outside their own 20 yard line awaiting to receive this kick from Ridgeway. Well, the Giz lit it up last week, didn't he? Terrific game, as usual, from the Giz, and they kick away from the Giz to Floyd. Floyd has trouble with it. He's able to pick it up and roll to about the 28-29 yard line where Damon Allen will scrimmage first and 10. Elmer was downfield very quickly for the Riders. Ball at the 29. And again, Allen gets to Floyd. Hole on the right side. And Floyd crosses the 45. Written down by Carlton Lance. 17 yard pickup for Floyd and the Eskimos. Just a great hole off the right side. Bates gets caught in the backfield where he's been a lot this year. Great hole off the right side. Ambrose and Morris open that up. Well, this has been the secret to the Eskimos' success over their five straight wins has been establishing that running game and is certainly working here this afternoon. We know that Ron Lancaster wanted to do that, control the ball, keep it out of the hands of Ken Austin. The ball's at the 46, first and 10 Eskimos. Man-to-man -man coverage here. Dumps it over the middle of Michael Souls, and Souls gets into Saskatchewan territory. Bernard there to bring him down. Edmonton's going to have to do a lot of this. Damon reads man-to-man -man coverage when his slot back comes in motion. Half that goes with him. He knows man-to-man -man coverage. Easy read for the quarterback. He knows he's got a hot opportunity. He anticipates it. Throws the football, completes it, first down. A 10 yard pickup. Making it first and 10, Eskimos. On the Rough Riders, 54. 3 3 tie, first quarter. 7.48 to play. Allen, under pressure from Stu Hill, gets it away. Flag goes down. Gerald Bayless. Offside on the defense number 98. First down, five to go. Well, this is what happens to you when you get caught off balance against an all-pro like Rod Connup. Eskimo was first and five on the 49-yard line. Watch him. Oh, a little cut off balance there. Got put on your keister. Bayless doing a dance and gets caught. First and five. Will they air it out? Will they go long? They get to Floyd, and Floyd gets the first down. Donaldson there to make the tackle for the Riders. A six yard game. Only needed five for the first down. That's a smart play. That's a smart play. First and five. Uh, go ahead and take two cracks at it. Play field position. Pick up the first down. Great play, Con. Floyd has carried the ball four times and picked up 31 yards. That has been the early story in this Western semifinal. First and 10 Eskimos on the 43 yard line of the Riders. Again, it's Floyd. This time he goes nowhere. He runs into big Gerald Bayless. Gerald Bayless for the tackle. Maybe Gerald Bayless got a little upset when uh, he cut off, got cut off balance on that last play. Uh, now he gets a little upset. Tosses Bourgeois around, gets in the backfield, and just does a nothing on Lucius Floyd. And early in that play, you saw how Bayless was getting double teamed. Two men coming at him to try and that, move the Giants. That is one man, too, boy. He is some kind of man. Second and nine, Eskimos. Allen throws it over the head of Lucius Floyd. Incomplete. Damon wish he had that one back. He read the man-to-man -man coverage again when they went to uh, three people to his right side. Uh, Damon read the halfback going over, knowing he's going to get man-to-man -man coverage. He went to a linebacker on, uh, on Lucius Floyd and delivered the football just a little bit high. 
That brings on Glenn Harper in his first punt of the game, averaging 41 yards a kick. Angles it into the corner, bounces into the end zone, and it comes out again. Riders scoop it up and get out to the 10 yard line where they will scrimmage first and 10. A 3 3 tie. 5 51 to play. Opening quarter. Kent Austin. And what numbers he has put up this season. 5,754 yards, 31 TDs, 25 interceptions. A very impressive performance by Ken Austin this season, his best ever. He's got Mike Sauters back in the lineup for Saskatchewan, coming off five games out with an injured ankle. And look at the receivers he has got. The three amigos, all over 1,000 yards. The Bushwhackers, the front five right there for us, Steve. Craig Henderson, Scott Henderson, Mike Anderson. Dan Payne. Austin puts it out complete. Fairholm on the 12-yard line. Holland brings him down for the Eskimos. Fairholm being a uh, possession receiver or a go-to guy who make the big play for you. Here he turns into a possession receiver, reads his own, sits in a hole, picks up five. I think they're all big play guys. Narcisse, Elgard, and Fairholm. They've been together for something like seven years. They know each other so well. You're exactly right, Steve. That's why they're so successful through the air. Second and five riders. Austin puts it up, looking for Narcisse, and it's incomplete. Mm. Willie, P <laughs> Willie Pless got away with one there. He wasn't playing a football. He's playing a defender, and more times than not, officials will throw the flag on that play. Roberts, Woods, and Goods, the down linemen for the Eskimos. The linebacking crew, Hunter, Ruck, Pless, and... Leroy Blue. Those guys can bring the heat, those four right there. Rodgers, Wilson, and Barry, I think the keys to the Eskimos' defensive secondary. Not question. This situation you don't want to be too, too, in, too, in too often when you're Saskatchewan punting the ball away to uh, these two. And when we come back, the Edmonton Eskimos once again will have excellent field position tied at three. Welcome back to Commonwealth Stadium. Saskatchewan Edmonton tied at three. Barry Wilburn twisted his right knee a little bit on a specialty on a punt recently. Collision with J.P. Esquerdo. He's okay. He's in Jim Sandusky's face. He was a teammate of uh, Kent Austin in college. Played against Gerald Bayless. Kent Austin says that Gerald Bayless uh, was not the prospect that Barry Wilburn was. Wilburn, of course, went on to six years in the NFL. Intercepted two passes in the Super Bowl against John Elway and the Denver Broncos. Austin on the sidelines right now watching his counterpart Damon Allen work the Eskimos offense. First and 10 from the Riders 51. Allen airs it out and it's incomplete. He was looking for Floyd. Brown was covering on the play and the flag goes down where Brown was covering Floyd. Forward pass interference by the defense. A 10 yard penalty. First down. Saying that was unintentional. Not sure if I believe in that one. Call him as you see him, Matt. Yeah. Even uh, though you think George Black's a good official. You I said think, that yesterday. I think he's one of the best in the league. We're very Still fortunate to have some. First down, ball on the field, no, he didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and one of those deals where uh, they're just playing ball and let it go, just give him a 10 yard penalty. And that result is a first and 10 situation for the Eskimos from the Riders 41. Tied at three, 405 to play opening quarter. To the right side, downtown Eddie Brown. Got some room. Really putting a tough, putting the defensive backs uh, in a tough situation there, lining up in twins, we call it, when they line up behind each other. One comes off the line of scrimmage, the other's uh, 12 yards off the line, off the ball. He's got to come up and cover the other cat. He's just sitting right in the backfield. And, Makes it very difficult for the defensive backs to understand who to come off on and who to cover and ISO on. A 24 yard pickup. First and 10 Eskimos from the Riders 17. Get the same look down here. Floyd. And he's hit at the line of scrimmage and brought down by Hill. When Stewart hits people, he hits people. We heard that one up here in the box. That kind of shakes you up. Stewart is a solid man. He's kind of like an, he, and, he and Bob Jerson are like 
unsung heroes on that defensive line. These guys have unbelievable amount of sacks amongst all of them. Bayless, Lewis, Hill, Jerison. Wouldn't want to play those guys every week. Gain of one on that last play. Ball at the Riders 16. Allen puts it up. Touchdown, Eddie Brown. There's that dime I was talking about. Damon Allen throwing a dime. Now that's more like a Damon Allen pass there. You can see the difference in that ball and the ball he threw to the scene we got P.I. on. This ball is a strike. It looked like a shot out of cannon. It's a great drive for Edmonton there. 15 touchdowns over the course of the regular season for Eddie Brown, first in the playoffs. A perfect strike, Damon Allen to Eddie Brown. Taking advantage of his own defense, Eddie finding the hole, Damon delivering the ball. Quarterbacks, receivers call a strike like that a dying because it's put on a dime. Great execution by Edmonton. Fleming puts it up and through, and we have a 10-3 semi-final game here at Commonwealth Stadium. Favor the Eskimos. Here comes Eddie coming off the ball. He actually turns Anthony around with an out move and then snapped it right up the seam and Damon put a dime on him. He knew, he know, Damon knows that he threw a dime on that play right there. That was actually man-to-man -man coverage. Anthony was beaten so bad, I thought it was zone. That's just a tremendous, tremendous move by, by Mr. Brown. And you know that Eddie Brown is one happy football player celebrating his first career playoff touchdown to give the Eskimos a 10-3 lead. He's so quick, and he's got that ability to turn a defensive back around like that. Damon knows that. That's why he had 15 TD tosses to him this year. Eskimos led 3-0 on an early field goal from Sean Fleming. And when the Eskimos had taken the lead in a game, they are 12-1. It's kind of an intimidating stat there, huh, Steve? A very intimidating. This is Saunders. Looking for room on the left side, and it's cut off very neatly by Wilson. Donnie, I like to have a good time, Wilson. Boy, he loves playing this game. That's a big hit. Momentum carried over from offensive special teams there. 62-yard kickoff and an 18-yard return from Saunders. Now, let's see if the Riders can counter. Riders first and get a drive going like they did the first time. They got their hands on the ball and not go two and out. Little better field position for Kent Austin as he operates out of the shotgun. First and 10. Complete. Underneath the one of the Boyko brothers. I had good fortune playing with uh, Alan Boyko. That situation, Bruce came up with a, I think, a possession type of catch in first and 10, picking up four yards. Don Matthews coaching with a little pain after spending the night in the hospital with stomach problems following an appendectomy just a little over a month ago. Says he's feeling fine now. Austin dumps it off to Saunders. Saunders does a juggling act, and that cost him. Leroy Blue is there to bring him down. Leroy Blue sniffing that screen out from the get-go. There's a flag on the play. Holding on Saskatchewan's gonna be refused by Edmonton. You can see Leroy just sniffing out that screen from the get-go. Great pursuit angle and made the tackle against a tough runner. For death. Saunders had a little difficulty hanging on to the ball and getting the ball in place, and that may have given Blue that extra fraction of a second he needed. Brent Maddox, second punt of the game. Let's see if he kicks it away from Gizmo. He does it again. Going right to the big guy. See if anything happen. Looks like a no-yards penalty right there. Excellent special team coverage from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on a 34-yard punt and Zippo return from Henry Gizmo Williams. They'll pick up a good 10 right here. No yards on the offense number nine. 15 yards, first down. Picks up 15. There you go.
Josh Carlton getting caught right there, red-handed. He's two yards. But that may be take the 15 yards rather than give Gizmo the opportunity to get into the open field. No, nah, he just got to break down. Carlton, I think, was a little over anxious there, Steve. Uh, his mistake there, he's got to break down and contain, contain Giz. First and 10 at Damon. Allen goes to Souls. Souls breaks one tackle. He gets by Lance, but he's brought down by the second tackle. Let's take another peek at it. Just a search play coming to our left. They call that 55 search. Dame reading man-to-man -man coverage, dumps it off. Michael Souls being a good pass receiver out of the backfield. Turns around, makes a nice catch, eludes the tackle there. In come the sticks. I think Lance just bounced off him on the first tackle. Second and one for the Eskimos. From the 40, and Damon Allen loses control of the ball. Do the Riders have it? Allen on the QB keeper. No indication. Damon Allen was going to keep it himself and go up the middle for the yard. That's all he needed to keep the drive alive, but he lost control of the ball. What do you think? Take, take my first shot at this? I think it's going to be a first down. <laughs> oh, that's a big gamble, QB. Yes, sir. There you go, Matty. You one for one. You know, that quarterback center exchange taken for granted so often, but in a critical situation like that, when you know you're going to get popped trying to get your yard, you tend to have, uh, uh, you do things a little bit differently. Center's firing off the football, and the ball's in a different position than it normally is. Damon was lucky to get that ball back. Good look at the hands in position for the exchange there. First and 10 Eskimos from the Riders 39. They get to Floyd up the middle. Hill there to make the tackle for the Riders. Stewart's in a tough position there because he's got outside contained responsibility on Damon Allen, and yet he's got to crash down on the play and make sure that uh, the runner doesn't have a cutback opportunity. There he did a great job. But I think Damon does have the Sally Rand. Sally Rand meaning naked boot around the outside. I was going to get you to elaborate on that. This should be the final play of the opening quarter. Allen over the middle. Complete to Floyd. And Floyd picks up the first down. Bernard there to make the tackle for the Riders. Ray Bernard playing in the middle for him. And the gun goes to end the opening quarter play here at Commonwealth Stadium. The Eskimos with a seven-point lead over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Time of possession, 937 to 523, favor the Eskimos. Exactly and what no Edmonton yards wanted. rushing for Saskatchewan. That speaks volumes. Exactly what Edmonton wanted to do is control the football, keep Saskatchewan off the field. First and 10 from the 26, Allen rolling out. Allen's got some room. Look out. Allen down inside the five-yard line. Can you say Sally Wren? Sally Wren, baby. Make it boot. Make it boot around the left. Damon making it happen. Putting pressure on the defense with the pass and run. We talked about that on the onset of this football game, and he's making it happen here. He comes up limping. Ah, that's Marcus. That's his brother's limp there. That, don't let that fool you. He'll be back out there doing it some more. He learned that from his brother. 920 yards rushing over the course of the regular season, and 23 right there to put the Eskimos in scoring position. First and goal. They get the Floyd. Touchdown! Come on! Look at Lucius Floyd. Celebrate. Why not, baby? Why not? Big game. First touchdown. Let's rock and roll. Enjoy it. Get everybody going. Get the crowd in the game. That's the way to do it. You score, you got to enjoy it. Brian Kelly always used to say, you score, make, make it look like you've been there before. For me, I go in the end zone. I score. I'm having a good time. Yeah, we're looking at Damon coming off the sidelines there. It looks like he's uh, maybe a little banged up more than we anticipated. Sean Fleming will attempt the point after for the Eskimos. Automatic as usual. And we have a 17-3 semifinal favor of the Eskimos. Let's take a peek at Dumaresk and Blake Dermont on the left side, opening up the hole for Lucius Floyd to exploit. Exploit's a good word. He exactly certainly what did. they do. Fantastic. 
You make the hole and I'll find it. And that's Con exactly what his line is. up tied up. Mr. Bayless just long enough or Lucius had an opportunity to do a little dance. I've never seen you do that after scoring a touchdown. You're not going to see me either. That's, a, that's a, called athletic ability, and that's not within my realm. I hope them is all right. This is, this is not a good situation for Edmonton. Although they're up 17 to three, they'd like this guy to be in the game doing what he just did, putting them in great field position, opportunity to score the football. And I think one of the important factors in that drive was the time it took, two minutes and 53 seconds. The Eskimos continue to control the football, which is what Ronnie Lancaster wanted them to do. Ulmer at the 30. Still on his feet. Good second effort by Ulmer, and he fumbles. But the Riders are there to Darryl scoop it up. Got a little ruckus out there in the football field. Sean Fleming, of all people, mixing up. Oh, we got a flag, too. On sportsmanlike conduct on someone. Murphy and Walling mixing it up there. So much at stake in this game. A trip to the Western Final. No wonder. No infraction on the play. It'll be a first down. Good call. Good call, George. Let the guys play. Well, you know, temper's going to flare in like a big game like you talked about, Steve. Tom Mickey talked to Ron Lancaster yesterday. Yesterday, he said, what happens if Damon Allen goes down? He hesitated for about a minute before he responded to our question and said, well, if we need to control the football and run the ball, keep the defense off the field, We'll put Tom Mickey in. We need to throw it. We'll put in Ricky Foggy. First and ten for the Riders. Flags go down. Coming back to Damon on the Sally Rand right here. This is where he gets hurt. Took a shot right in the back of the leg there. I don't know if he stretched out and pulled a hammer or if he just took it like a charley horse in the back of the leg. Remember, we saw him limping back to the huddle before that play, so that one, that last play combined with the one earlier, may have done it. Austin out of the shotgun. First and 15. Puts it up. Complete to Narcisse on the far sidelines, covered by Ed Berry. Berry doing a good job. One-on-one -on, -one on Narcisse. You can't let him get behind. Ball's near a long time here. Long throw across the field. Ed Berry has time to close on it and make, makes a great open field tackle against Donald Narcisse. He's excellent in the open field. Dangerous receiver. That's a high-risk pass, isn't it? Well, it is, but uh, Kent, you know, and judging his arm, knowing how, well, how far he had to put the ball out there, reading the defender, knew he could get it out there, and hopefully Donald would break a tackle, but Ed Berry just did a tremendous job of wrapping him up. No gain on the play, second and 10 from the 41. Austin with a little time. This time completes. Has the first down. Comes back to Narcisse, and that time it worked. It looked like they're gonna cover, like they cover four, and he give and the cover four is a zone coverage uh, that Edmonton employed there. You give zone coverage, you don't put pressure on Ken Austin's face, and he's gonna do that to you every time. A 17-yard pickup for Narcisse and the Riders, giving them first and ten. And the ball is in Edmonton territory at the 53-yard line. Complete to the right sidelines. Saunders. And again, flags go down as tempers begin to flare. Barry? Steve, I don't think we're going to see Damon Allen out of the game very long. He's just feeling his back uh, of his right hamstring. The stats tremendous so far. Uh, Tom Mickey is warming up on the sideline, but Jim Sandusky came over and diagrammed a play, not for Tom Mickey, but for Damon Allen. I think he'll be ready to go back in. Take your foul on the Nine passes, seven completions, not a bad percentage. Unnecessary roughness there, Mr. Black tells us. Number 26, I believe, Glenn Rogers. Look at the different kind of footwear we're seeing here this afternoon. That's Ray Bernard. He's got two different kind of shoes, one on the right, one on the left. I wonder if he's got a split personality, too. <laughs> Austin out of the shotgun. Over the middle, Fairholm. Hunter brings him down. Perfect example of Ken Austin being one of the most prolific passers in the CFL. Knows that his team's got to get good first down yardage, throws underneath the Fairholm on a possession type route. We call it an under route. Makes a grab, turns it upfield, picks up good six yards. That's where Fairholm and Elgard are so great. Running those 
roots underneath. They know they're going to get hit. Yet they go and get the ball. Second and four, Riders. Class coming. Puts it up again, looking for Saunders. That time it's incomplete. Willie Pless coming on a blitz there that time, and it's a situation where it puts a little bit more pressure in Kent's face. He's got to get rid of the ball quicker than he would like. Throws the ball a little bit behind Mike Saunders, and uh, now they got a trap field goal. That should bring on Robo kicker Dave Ridgeway. What a season he's had. 90% of his field goal attempts were good. If I can say that's stupid good there. I mean, that is just so good. That's, that's crazy. Mr. Automatic. This one from the 33 yard line. And it's good. Three more points to the Rough Rider total. It is now 17 6. Favor the Eskimos, 10 36 to play, second quarter. And Saskatchewan kicking off to the Eskimos. This is Floyd. He finds a hole. Tripped up just shy of the 50 yard line by Maurice Crum. A 56 yard kick and a 30 yard return. Look at this. Looks like Sybil's playing a game. They don't know what they want to play play with out there. They're not taking any chances. I don't think there's a pair of shoes left in Saskatchewan. That's Dwayne Mandruziak there, though. And, and, you know. First four possessions, and the Eskimos have done exceptionally well. They are first and ten from the 49-yard line. Over the middle. Lucius Floyd, Bernard wraps him up and brings him down. Green Bernard with his stop. Looks like about four yards. That's so what's happening inside. It gets down and dirty in here. This is why you got to double. You got to you got to double team this man. Broshi and Connor going head to head with one of the best defensive men in the league. Just not this year, but in years past as well. He's just now getting his due recognition. Second and six Eskimos from the 53-yard line. for some room on the left side. He's got it. He's got the first down. And then slides at the 42 at the right. Can I say he was just Marcus Allen in it before? Did that look like he was injured? I don't think so. That's what Damon's been doing the last five weeks. That's why Ronnie Lancaster's club is 5-0 uh, and over the last, the last five games of the regular season. Damon just looking pretty doing that, picking him up and putting him down. A 14-yard pickup for Damon Allen. Look at that little pump fake. And then he decides he'll go it himself Oops. to the left. Right kind of finding out how strong Gerald Bettis is. Got to put on his keys. They're one and one now. He's up the score. First and 10, Edmonton. They get the floor. And he crashes down at the 35-yard line. Stuart Hill on a tackle there. Coming off tackle, he's got a tough job. I'm telling you, he's got outside contained conscious uh, responsibilities with Damon Allen, and he's got to be able to. He's got to be there for the cutback on Lucius Floyd. Those are two tough people to have to watch the whole game. Great mix of plays by the Edmonton offense, using the running play, using the passing of Damon Allen, and the running of Damon Allen. A good game plan engineered by Lancaster and the Eskimos offensive staff. Got man coverage happening here. Second and two. Give to Floyd. He's got the first down and then some. He could go. No, he's brought down across the 15-yard line. Anthony there to make the touchdown saving tackle because if he hadn't have brought him down, he was gone. Right over the top of Dumaras and Connup. Connup doing a great job on Bayless, tying him up. Blake Dermott kicked his man out. Lucius Floyd having a heck of a game. Got 10 carries for 69 yards already. Outstanding game from Lucius Floyd. First and 10 Eskimos. The ball at the Riders 15 yard line. Edmonton lead 17 to 6. Allen gets to Floyd. Incredible, Steve. You just don't see that happen too often against uh, against Saskatchewan's D line. Rod Connup and Gerald Bayless getting after it in the middle there. Gerald probably taking exception to being manhandled there by by Connup in the offensive line that series. Believe me, no defensive line likes to uh, likes to be run run at and run at successfully like Edmonton just did. This is a team that looked. 
absolutely brilliant against the BC Lions. Did the same thing against Calgary, and now they're doing it to Saskatchewan. Oh. Rod Connick just doing it up there of occupying Gerald Bayless. Randy Ambrosio off the right side, open up a big hole that Lewis Floyd once again exploits. And the point after is good, 24-6, favor the Eskimo. John Fleming kicking off to Saunders. Saunders at the 30. And he gets out to the 40-yard line. J.P. Esquerdo is there to bring him down. Look at the difference in rushing, and that has been the story. 84 to zip. That's just Lucius Floyd. I mean, that's not including Damon, Michael Souls. But that's not an unusual statistic, because you've seen that all year long. Because we know that Saskatchewan likes to live and die by the air, and I'm sure they're going to have to put it up here, trailing by 18 points. First and 10 riders from their own 40. Austin out of the shotgun. It's a halfback blitz here. He was looking for Narcisse, and it falls incomplete. He certainly had lots of time. Good protection there at that time for Ken Austin. Just down the highway, Calgary playing the BC Lions. BC getting their points from Louis Pisaglia, a 25-yard field goal. You saw earlier how the Stampeders got their touchdown. They lead 7-3. to three. Here, it's 24-6. Favor the Eskimos. Remember, the winner of this game will meet the winner of the game in Calgary this afternoon. Austin again out of the shotgun. Fires back across the middle. The pass was deflected. It was intended for Fairholme, but Woods got a piece of it. I know Tony Woods feels good about getting a hand on that one, getting involved in the game, making a big play for the Eskimos there. Previous play in first and ten, Eskimos trying to bring more pressure on Ken Austin, brought Glenn Rogers off the corner and uh, try to put pressure in Austin's face. Here's Tony doing his goods here. Just got the back of his wrist on the ball, seemed like enough to deflect it away from Fairholme. Good thing, too, he's wide open across the middle. Riders forced to punt. This is the Gibbs. Backed up to his own 15-yard line and brought down there by Carlton Lance. Good downfield coverage from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, but they're in a hole. They're down 24 to 6. First and 10 Eskimos from their own 10. Damon Allen gives the Floyd. Floyd with some room. Floyd battles his way up just shy of the 20-yard line. Good block from Dermott. That offensive line doing the job for the Eskimos. A 10-yard game. That's amazing the way that Edmonton's controlling the line of scrimmage. Blake Dermott pointing up field. Great block on number, number 95, Ray Bernard. First that's and big, ten, Eskimo. It's a big man coming around the corner there. It's not easy for 280-pounders to do that. All of the 20. They give to Floyd again. A couple of yards that time for Floyd running into Bobby Jurison. Those guys, Steve, got to be getting a little tired right about now, the way that Edmonton's controlled this ball the entire first half here. That's the last thing you wanted to see if you were Don Matthews, to keep that defense on the field as long as they had been there. That's right. Got some big boys, and you make them run sideline to sideline, they're going to get tired. Second to nine, Eskimos from the 21 yard line. Let's check out Barry Wilburn and Jim Sandusky here. They really haven't seen much action over here. He was looking for Eddie Brown that time. Charles Anthony was covering on the play, and it's incomplete. Damon was expecting Eddie to look hot inside to pick up a quick uh, possession type of of throw and Eddie was trying to take it up over the top and a little miscommunication there which happens and with Eddie Brown's speed he can get behind you so quickly Damon knows he's got to get rid of the football in a hurry though in that situation and uh, he does the smart thing by putting it where nobody else can catch it whistles are blown and we got a couple of players going at it Edmonton in a punting situation Saunders Scoops it up. He's at no. the 50 and brought down. No yards will be the call against the Eskimos. Hunter. Kind of agree with this. I kind of agree with the fans on this one. Hunnigan's up. opposition for outstanding player in the CFL this year. Mike 
Do an effort by the Eskimos defense, Larry Ruck. Larry getting a little anxious. Great job by Kent changing up his snap count, drawing the defense offside. Need to get something going, anything, and by mixing up that, you know, you're going to get offside five number free 47 yards. on the defense. First down, repeated. Larry Ruck guilty of the violation, so they'll do the first down all over again. Advance the ball to just inside the 45-yard line of the Eskimos. Had to wait for the 22nd clock to be reset. Details, details. Believe me, quarterbacks look at those 22nd clock. That is like, uh, that is our alibi out there. We watch those clocks like there's no tomorrow. You were telling us yesterday that's one thing you're really cognizant of and you, and you hate to be called for is a time count violation. Uh, you take pride in getting the playoff. And Only two in his entire career, folks. Ken Austin. Not a Gets lot of off to the there. big man. Mike Saunders. Meeting some of Edmonton's finest in Larry Ruck and Willie Pless in the middle there. Not a big surprise, though, Steve, when they line up uh, back in the backfield that they're going to give it to him. And they finally got some rushing yards to go along with the yards uh, put on the board by Lucius Floyd. Uh, it's important to keep that defense honest. They haven't had uh, much to worry about as far as the run goes, that's for sure. Austin in and out of the arms of Fairholm, and it's not too often you'll see Jeff Fairholm have a ball hit his hands like that and end up on the ground. Looks like he was looking to run the ball before he caught it. Easy read for Ken Austin. They went three receivers to his right side. The halfback did not go over to contain the, uh, the third receiver. You know it's a zone read. Fairholm knows that, sits right in the hole. Ah, he's taking a peek at Donnie Wilson coming over to say hello before he caught the ball. I think it's a natural thing to do. Yeah, you don't I see think, it happen too often. Though. I think I'd have an eye out for Wilson. Second and 10, Austin from the shotgun. Has Down the rail. Boyko takes it at the 12, out of bounds. Got to love that big play. Saskatchewan needed it. 24 to 6, Eskimos lead. 2.52 remaining to play here at Commonwealth Stadium in the second quarter. Edmonton leading 24 to 6, but the Riders are on the move. Kent knew that last time he got, uh, he went three receivers to his right, he got zone coverage. This time he puts four. Bruce Boyko up the sideline. Does an exceptional job of keeping his feet in bounds there to make the reception. First and 10, Riders from the 13. Quick pass over the middle, Boyko. Touchdown, Riders. That's vintage Kent Austin, knowing what the defense is going to give to him. He flooded his zone with four receivers last play. Boyko came up with a big catch on the sidelines. He does the same thing to the opposite side this time. Boyko comes hot off the line of scrimmage. Count it. I know the Boyko parents got to be proud of their boys this season. Bruce and Allen having tremendous years. Vintage Ken Austin right there. Ryder fans, wherever you go across this great country of ours, they love the Jolly Green Riders. Bridgeway attempts the cover, and it's good. Critical touchdown for uh, Saskatchewan there. They needed some points on the board right before the half. Boyko releasing hot. Leroy Blue getting caught there. Again, the quick pass to Boyko. That's beautiful. Boyko setting up Blue, get, get, showing him block responsibility, then coming off. Ken Austin, a little, little celebration here. Very excited. Kind of gets that monkey off your back. Now you settle down, relax. Got the first major on the board. Got his team in a roll. Ex exceptional drive. Felt comfortable. I looked like Kent there. You've been there before. You know what that's like to get that monkey off your back. It settles you down, you know, and uh, Edmonton settled down offensively because they've been on the field most of the first half. You know, uh, Saskatchewan, they've been uh, hit and miss, two and out. Uh, just hadn't been clicking on all cylinders. This is Floyd, comes up just shy of the 45-yard line. Pitcher there to make the tackle for the Riders. Errol Martin and Dan Farthing getting after it. 
Oh, little hold there, and I'll come back to me. I'll hold you again, or I'll hold you. Hello. Little effort here. Come on, I ain't through it yet. Little push in the face, back at you. That's what it's all about on special teams. Getting after it, a little heart there, having fun, mixing it up. First and 10 Eskimos. They get the fly, Floyd looking for some running room on the left side, and is quickly shut down by the Saskatchewan defense. Brasovich over there to make the stop. Here comes a six back. Oh, Crumbs, Crumbs limping off the field here. Maurice Crumb coming off the field. Saskatchewan going with six defensive backs here. Call it the six pack. A gain of two on the last play, second and eight for the Eskimos from the 47 yard line. Edmonton lead 24 13. David Allen fires complete over the middle. Lucius Floyd, lots of room. Floyd falls by himself over the 30 yard line. Glenn Suter was going one way, Floyd the other, and Floyd tripped up. Just great play calling on Edmonton. They have, uh, have done an exceptional job of knowing what to expect against Saskatchewan and taking advantage of it. Lucius coming out of backfield just on a little crossing pattern. And Terrell Elmer can't get on, get on him in time, and Lucius turns into a big game for the Eskimos. Once again, I might add. One too many moves on the part of Lucius Floyd that time, as you see it from the other angle. Damon Allen firing to Lucius Floyd. First Mike Dumeres doing a heck of a job there in ISO on Gerald Bettis for that last play. Hill bringing down Souls. Maurice Crum, a little shaken up. Saw him hobble off the field a couple plays ago. That doesn't look very good. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to walk that off in a few minutes. Look for Dan Rasevich to come in and take his spot. Maurice Crum, the rookie out of the University of Miami. Second and six Eskimos from the 28-yard line. Allen with the quick drop. Quarterback drawer, and it works. He's coming back. We're going to have a hold. Edmonton. Boy, that's frustrating as a quarterback, I tell you that. You know, you get a big game, get close, you get a first down and holding. Boy, holding just, on the offense number 67, second down repeated. It's going to be second along to a situation you don't like to be in, especially against these guys. With that front four of Saskatchewan, no, it is not a good and healthy position to put yourself in. This is something that Gerald Bayless really forces you into at times. He's got such great leg drive that Rod really doesn't have a choice. Rod is inviting him to go to the outside, but just not that quickly. Kind of surprised him. Second and 16 Eskimos from the 38-yard line. 114 to play second quarter. Going to three double cut zone defense. That souls shy at the first down by about six yards. Forced out of bounds at the 26. Lance over there to push him out. Damon realizing that he got zone coverage. They had three people deep. He's going to have to throw underneath. He does a great job of just dumping the ball to the back in a flat, picking up some yardage. And Michael does a great does a great job of keeping his balance here, looting the tackle on Albert Brown. Moves up for puts the team in great field goal situation. Should be a chip shot for Sean Fleming. Souls is not easy to bring down. We've seen a couple of would-be tacklers bounce off him in this game this afternoon. He's a lot bigger than he anticipated. Plays bigger than he is. John Fleming, perfect so far in this one. This from the 34. Well, he took a long time getting that ball off. That's been his trouble zone here at Commonwealth Stadium, but he was good on that one as the Eskimos add another three points. And now we've got another altercation on the far side of the field. Randy Ambrosi mixing it up over there. He's picking on a big man, Mr. Dan Payne. No love lost between these two teams, and as we point out, so much at stake. A look at Sean Fleming's last field goal attempt, and look what happened after the kick. That's uh, unintentional, I believe, there, and uh, Sean just following through with his kick there. Did you see the look of intensity on his face? Well, you can tell this game means a little bit of something. He feels like he has something to prove. First and ten for the Riders. Austin out of the shotgun, complete to Narcisse. 
Steve, what's happening right now is Edmonton is con continually giving Kent Austin zone coverage. So Kent's going to flood an area. If they're going to leave men to one side, Kent's going to put all his receivers to the other and flood the zone, and he's going to have open people. Saskatchewan going without the huddle. 57 seconds to play second quarter. They trail 27-13. Austin, again, complete to Narcisse. Two in a row. He has the first down. Just playing pitch and catch here, throwing where they're not. Narcisse coming off, finding the hole in the zone. Ken just delivering the football. An 11 yard pickup. Great play selection and execution on the part of Damon Allen has given the Eskimos a 27 13 lead. First half, first half's not over yet, Steve. Completes that one to Farrell. Stopped at the 40, but he picks up the first down. Wilson there to make the tackle for Edmonton. Edmonton continually giving uh, Saskatchewan zone. These guys read zone better than anybody. Fairholm pushing off Donnie Wilson, sitting in the hole. Can't deliver the ball like he does best. First and 10 from the 40. Pass over the middle. Saunders play. underneath again. He runs into Wilson, and he stopped. But he was still on his feet when he was stopped. The tussle between Wilson and Saunders. And again, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders going without the huddle. 33 seconds to play, second quarter. Austin, complete to Saunders. Saunders trying to get to the 25-yard line, has the first down. Just playing pitch and catch. Edmonton continually giving zone defense. Kent knows that, puts people out in the zone. They sit in the hole, and he's picking them apart. It's just kind of bend, not, not break type of philosophy Edmonton's in right now. Seven plays in a row, it's worked. Austin makes it eight in a row. Or does he? No, it was incomplete. Narcisse had a piece of it, but couldn't hang on as he was falling down. So you don't see this too often by Donald Narcisse. He's usually a very sure-handed receiver coming off reading zone. We call that a juke pattern when he comes in on an under and then he jukes back out to the out and sits in a hole in the zone. Ball was a little bit low, but I know that Donald would like to have that one back. Second and 10, Riders. The ball at the 25. 14 seconds to play, second quarter. No reason to put the ball in the end zone here. Just pick up the first down. That's what he's done. Elgard inside the 10, still on his feet. Great effort from Elgard as he battles his way down to the five-yard line, brought down by Wilson. A 20-yard pickup with six seconds to play, second quarter. Okay. Ken Austin, knowing that he doesn't have to put the ball in the end zone, knows that he's got to pick up the first down, put his team in good field position for an opportunity of either going in the end zone or the field goal. Elgar gave him a little bit extra there afterwards, and picking up 20 yards and a first down and a five. First and goal to go, Riders, from the Eskimos five. Austin passes over the middle, complete to Fairholm, but the Eskimos pull him down. And there is no time left on the clock. So the Riders drive late in the second quarter is stalled and Austin is not happy. Looks like a little uh, home field advantage there with that clock work. And it looks like Jeff Fairholm paid for that. He's shaking sure up on the play. Sure, did. he was drawing a large crowd there in a hurry. He had three receivers on him right, uh, three de defenders on him right. Right as he caught the ball and got dragged down from behind. Don Matthews spent the night in the hospital, back on the bench like the trooper that he is. Ron Lancaster certainly had to be pleased with the performance of his offense so far in this game, especially the play of the offensive line against a very, very tough front four of the Riders. Ridgeway kicks off. Floyd drops it. Still gets up and gets a few yards. It looked like he didn't have control, but he managed to get across the 40-yard line where Damon Allen was scrimmage first and 10. Elgard there to make the tackle for the Riders. Looked almost identical to a play in the first half. Ooh, look at that. Edmonton controlling the line of scrimmage. Rushing 119 yards to seven for Saskatchewan. Look at the time of possession, the biggest factor right there. Almost 19 to 11 minutes of difference there. So almost an eight minute difference there. That is a huge difference in it, terms of time 
in possession. There's one of the big stories in the first half for the Eskimos, Lucius Floyd. First and ten, Eskimos from the 41. Give it to Floyd, and you know what that first is time right in this there. game, I don't think he gets anything. Oh, you know, Stuart Hill was not outside contain conscious on that play. Damon Allen, I know, is taking a peek at that. He crashed down on the cutback, and Lucius Floyd and stopped the run. Damon pushing the ball to his backs quite often. Eight receptions already. Eddie Brown only two for 40, but a big one in there in the first half. Pretty route and pass. Damon using the ball control type passing with his backs coming out of backfield. Second of 11 Eskimos from the 40. And time. the play is blown down. Time count violation. Ooh, that just gets up underneath your skin as far as your, your quarterback. Time count goes. violation. Edmonton number nine. Man, this is like giving up five free yards. That is a frustrating call. I know Damon is, uh, would like to have that 20-second clock back and do it over. Second and 16. The Riders are coming, but he gets some time. The pass is blocked before it got back to the line of scrimmage. Damon trying to draw the pressure to him. He's going to throw underneath to his backs. He's ran his three, receive, uh, three of his receivers up the seams to take those people out of the play. And he's going to dump it underneath to a control type pass. But it's just wreaking havoc in the middle there. And he comes up with the batted ball. What a great play by Bayless to get the arm up there. He was being bothered by the Eskimos, but he managed to get the right hand up and knock it down. Puts the Eskimos in a punting situation. Defenders, uh, defensive linemen, linebackers are tough. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. Make it tough for him. Saunders out to the 42-yard line, so that'll be good field position for Ken Austin and the Riders. Barry? Steve, Jeff Fairholm is done for the day. He injured his hamstring on that play at the end of the first half. His replacement is Dan Farthing. And he is a third-year pro out of the University of Saskatchewan, played for the Huskies. 192 yards gained on the season. We know Ken likes to distribute the ball across the board. Take a look at it here, doing a heck of a job in the first half, distributing the ball equally across the board. First and ten riders, and Saunders with the running play. Wilson there to make the stop for the Eskimos. Eight-yard pickup for Mike Saunders. Now Don Matthews has probably gone in at halftime and told his troops offensively, hey, there's no need to panic. We're only 14 points down. Let's stay within our game plan, try to bang out some first downs, get some momentum going, get in the flow of the game. No, no reason to panic in this situation. Let's take what they give us. Austin airs it out looking for Narcisse and incomplete. Barry covering on the play step for step against Narcisse, and he couldn't turn himself at the last minute to gain the right position to pull that one in from Kent Austin. A pass that I just don't understand why it was thrown. Um, Kent, I think, would like to have that one back. He probably thought it was a third and one situation where it's more like third and two. So he figured he had a free play, take a shot, go deep, see if he can't get the big play. And he looks over the sidelines in disgust, realizing that it was third and two, not third and one, knows that he's got to come out the field and punt the ball away. Matt H. on to punt for the Riders. Gizmo runs back looking for some room. Now turns it upfield and comes up shy of the 30-yard line, but a flag is down. 27-13 to score. The third quarter here at Commonwealth just underway. First and 10 Eskimos from the 39. Damon Allen over the middle. Complete. Lucius Floyd runs into Brown. But not before he has the first down. Albert Brown cut him in half. A 22-yard pickup. Let's take another peek at it. Zone coverage. Damon sends it back up the rail. Throws a dime. And Lucius Floyd gets cut right in half by Albert Brown. Probably a good idea because you don't want to take Lucius on up high. Another dime by Damon. Reading the coverage, delivering the ball on the seams. From the 50, first and 10 Eskimos. Good fake by Damon Allen. Elects to keep it. Puts his head down and comes up just shy of the 35-yard line. Bernard there to make the stop. Can you say Sally Rain? Yes, sir. Explain that one for me one more time. Well, there was this uh, uh, lady uh, a few years back. Her name was Sally Rand, and uh, 
She was in the burlesque show. And she came out naked uh, for an encore performance and he booted naked out the backside. And that's exactly what Damon did there. He, he's coming naked uh, on a boot, coming naked back out on the stage, so to speak, carrying the football. And he's carried it for 53 yards five times so far in this game. First and 10 Eskimos. They give to Floyd. Floyd gets away from one tackle, but he can't beat the double team the second time around. Anthony and Bernard combining to bring him down. Gerald Bayless in disgust with himself because uh, he had another uh, tackle for a loss there and uh, just got away from Lucius Floyd. Did an excellent job of spinning off a, a sure-handed tackle with Gerald Bayless. So he doesn't miss too many, does he? Nope. He's, he's got more tackles in the backfield this year than most of the people in the CFL have tackles, period. Second and seven, Edmonton. On the rider, 34. Comes some pressure off the edge. Damon sees it, delivers hot to number 33, Lucius Floyd. Great play. And Floyd is brought down by Ulmer Shy of the first down. They needed seven yards. They bring pressure Steve off the front off the corner here to the field. Damon reads that, knows he's got to get rid of the football, has Lucius on a hot pattern or a quick pass so he can get rid of the football. Lucius sees it coming, makes the catch, but they're just a little bit short of first down. Third and three has the ball at the 30 yard line. Third and three situation for Edmonton, so that brings on Sean Fleming for the field goal attempt. And from the 30 to the 39 yard line, this is where he's had difficulty. This one will come from the 37. This is right in that territory. Nice kick. That one is absolutely perfect for Sean Fleming, who worked out here a couple of days before this game. A rarity in Edmonton to actually work out on this turf prior to a playoff game. 30 to 13 favor the Eskimos. First and 10 riders. They complete the Farthing. And Farthing with his first reception, written out of play by Holland. Robert Holland uh, has got a lot of respect from his teammates. Uh, he's come in and done a remarkable job for the Eskimos. I had a great call there for uh, Ken Austin to get Farthing involved early. Farthing playing in place of the injured Jeff Fairholm, who went down on the last play of the first half. Austin. Fires over the middle, complete to his big target. Ray Elgar, Harley, hauls it in. Ruck and Pless haul him down. Ray coming up the line of scrimmage, reading zone. Does it better than most. Sits down right in the hole next to Willie Pless. Takes the hit, moves the ball, moves the chains. Edmonton playing a bend, not break type of defense here. First and 10 from the 48. Narcisse, and Narcisse costs it up. A turnover. The Eskimos recover. Great hit by Ed Berry. Superb hit by Ed Berry. Ed, Ed Berry looks like he's down too, paying a price for that uh, for that leather he just laid on that play. Where's the leather? They don't play with leather anymore. Well, that's an expression. Uh, Jackie Parker taught me that one. Ed Berry peeking inside. Narcisse sitting down in the zone coverage, catches ball. Good night. Oh, looks like he got his neck jammed back. It looks like he kind of had his neck compressed a little bit there. Allen with a good fake, buys some time, airs it out looking for Brown. And about 10 yards too far for the speedster Eddie Brown. Second and 10 Eskimos again from their own 48 yard line. This time Allen out the shotgun. The draw for Allen. Calls his own number up the middle. Has the first down by about a yard to spare. Great call on his own coverage. Three double cut. Corners are cutting. Halfbacks are going in deep third. Linebackers are dropping off in zone. Damon calls his own number on a draw play. Connor takes Bayless where he wants to go. Just pushes him out of the way. Ambrosi coming across, leading the way for Damon. He just slices through there. It's, it's uncanny the uh, likeness that he has of his brother when he runs the football. Second, make that first and 10 Eskimos. And again, Allen buys some time with a good fake. Fires into a wide open area. There wasn't Sandusky. an Eskimo within 15 yards, and the closest one was Sandusky. Sandusky slipped. I believe he's 
wanted to run an in pattern there. Damon with a play action fake to Lucius Floyd here helps out his offensive line a little bit. Mr. Bayless getting uh, some double attention there. Damon had all the time in the world to throw, but Jim Sandusky was going to run an in pattern, slip down, and Damon just threw the ball away. Second and ten Eskimos. As the sun creeps out for the first time here at Commonwealth Stadium. Allen. Looking. Lance was looking at him all the way. The intended receiver was Souls, but Lance had him lined up. Had Souls been able to make that catch, he would have paid for it. Yeah, Carlton Lance had a beat on him, that's for sure. Damon, I think, made a good play there. Smart decision. Throw the ball. Nobody can catch it. Don't take a loss. Put your team in good field position. Punt the ball away. Glenn Harper punting for the Eskimos. Saunders watches it bounce through the end zone. We have a flag back down at the line of scrimmage. Pitcher and, uh, pitcher and Dixon getting into it in the middle of the field there. Eskimos lead 30 to 13. First and 10 riders from the five complete to Narcisse. Narcisse up ended at the 10. Fumble. Edmonton recover. Larry Ruck. Big plays by the Edmonton defense making it happen. First got Ed Berry making Narcisse cough up the football a series before. Then Larry Ruck comes through with the big hit underneath pattern and comes up with a big hit, makes him cough it up again. Edmonton recovers, puts their team in great situation. The first turnover cost the Riders a field goal. This one could be more expensive. Austin throwing a control type pattern when she likes to throw, get rid of the ball quick, put the pressure on the defense to defend. Larry Ruck comes in, strips Narcisse of the ball, and then recovers the ball. Outstanding play. Congratulations, Mr. Ruck. I know he made Leanne happy on that play. A dream come true for the defender. Not only knock the ball loose, but you get the re rebound when the ball bounces off the turf. Allen puts it up. Touchdown, Brown! Oh, that's pretty. That is pretty. Let me tell you why this worked right here. Got motion by uh, Eddie Brown coming over. Got man-to-man -man coverage. He puts his man in an awkward position by moving across the line of scrimmage. They're trying to figure out who to cover. Eddie comes out free. The man is supposed to cover him. Vincent Donaldson's not even close because of the motion that he gave the defense prior to the snap of the football. Damon puts a dime out there, and Eddie goes to it, and that's an easy reception. Great execution by Edmonton. He opened the major scoring for the Edmonton Eskimos. He has his second touchdown of the game, his second career playoff TD. Allen to Eddie Brown. A lot of times we focus on, um, you know, the quarterback and the receiver making what's happening, but there's a lot of things going on out there that you don't see. And offensive line doing a heck of a job giving Damon the time to throw the football. Then you got Lucius Floyd to the backside making it work. Lucius on Stuart Hill giving Damon time to deliver the football. It's got like a fade pattern when the receiver just fades to the outside away from the defender. 37 to 13, favor the Eskimos. Homer at his 10. Upended shy of the 30-yard line, so when Ken Austin comes on to operate the offense, he'll have half decent field position and that was the game plan of Ronnie Lancaster to make Kent Austin and the Riders offense have a long way to go to get to the end zone. That's exactly right and what they're going to do is they're going to play zone and bend and not break and that's what they've been able to do today so far. Look how quickly the Eskimos jumped on that turnover. One play resulting in one TD. Boy, as a defensive player, boy, you got to feel good about that. You know, knowing that you had a direct result and uh, putting seven points up on the board for your team. First and ten riders. Austin's pass complete to Elgar. Elgar knocked out of bounds at the 37 by Wilson. Ray just slipping out underneath the zone here. Kent reads it. He's happy to take what they give him. Delivers it to the sidelines. And Ray takes a couple shots like he usually does. Fends him off and picks up a couple more yards for Kent in the offense. Holland 
goes underneath Ray. Ray just jumps out of the top and says, come on, I'll take a couple more shots. And goes out of bounds. An eight-yard pickup. Second and two riders. Saunders looking for first down territory. Plus and Ruck wrap him up. Vintage Edmonton hard-nosed defense here. Crowds into it, defenses into it, making plays. Second is short. Saunders is just snuffed by Larry Ruck and Willie Quest. Snuffed is a good word. Says it all. So is dying, but you won't say that. <laughs> Can you say dying? Come on, Steve, give me a dime. <laughs> all right, I'll continue to say snuff. Riders in a punting situation. Gizmo lets it bounce, and Susie picks it up. He is hit again. I think the Riders are in a situation where they're not going to give Gizmo the opportunity to explode and run one back. Thank you, Barry. Obviously, a very disappointed Jeff Fairholm. His father, Larry, is here watching him play this afternoon. Damon Allen, under some pressure, gets the pass away complete to Brown. at the 52-yard line of the Riders by another Brown. Damon stepping up into the pocket here, making it happen, keeping his eyes downfield. He has both run and pass threat to the defense, keeps his eyes downfield, focused, finds Eddie Brown, delivers the football, and Eddie does what he do, does best, he turns it upfield. An 18-yard pickup on that last play for the Eskimos. First and 10 from the 52. They lead 37-13. Jurison all over, all over Lucius on that play. And his cohort in crime, Gerald Bayless. That's the kind of effort the riders need from that front four. Take another look at it. Just a, just a search play right up the middle. Bayless getting double teamed, splitting it. Bobby Jerison and Gerald getting there about the same time. Then it becomes a gang tackle after that. And that's when you don't want to have the football. <laughs> a loss of one on the play. Second and 11 Eskimos on the 53. Looks like you're going to pressure Damon here. One on one coverage. Puts it up. He was looking for Floyd deep. Incomplete. Ulmer covering on the play. Lucius coming out of the backfield once again, going up the seam, covered, covered pretty well there by, by Terrell Alma. Damon just overshot the ball just a little bit. Harper, pump, and it's almost blocked by the Riders. Carlton Lance got a hand on that ball, Steve. Picked up by Saunders, and he gets out to the 28-yard line, but that bunt was almost blocked. Charles Anthony or Carlton Lance, I believe, were wreaking havoc in there on that play. Comes right up the middle, coming from the left side. Let's see if we can pick out who it is. Yep, number eight, Charles Anthony. Got his right hand up there. Good effort by the Riders, almost getting this punt block. Charles Anthony getting through to Harper and getting a hand on it. Bruce now Dixon trying to. Ten. Sorry, Steve Bruce Dixon trying to get it, do his best to keep Charles Anthony off of that. Austin looking for farthing way downfield, and it falls incomplete. Damian Lyons almost picked that off. Winner of this game will meet the winner of the game in Calgary. Austin out of the shotgun. Got a free one here, going to Elgard on a corner round. Elgard, wide open, complete. Big first down for the Riders. Flag on the play. We got an offsides on Saskatchewan, on, excuse me, on Edmonton here. I drew this play up for y'all last night in one of our meetings. We got an under pattern, a quick out, and then we got the number three going to the corner. and. Austin reads it perfectly, throws a dime. 31-yard completion to Mr. Ray Elgar. I don't think you said it would be a 31-yard completion, though. Ooh. Well. Big first down for the Riders. 
Austin puts it up again. Saunders almost made an incredible one-handed catch. Again, Damian Lyons covering on the play. Uh, I think he just, that was a token uh, effort to try to catch that ball because he saw Dame. He saw Damian Lyons uh, sitting out there in zone, knew it, that he was going to take a hit, and just kind of put a token hand up here and said, no, nope, I don't think so. Almost pulled it in. Yeah, almost. That's a heck of a con concentration, knowing you're going to take a hit. 277 yards for Austin, less for Allen, but where it counts the most, Allen and the Eskimos are leading on the scoreboard. Second and 10 for the Riders. Complete to Elgar. Breaks one tackle. Elgar down across the 35-yard line. Fumbles. Eskimos recover. And Barry still on his feet. Barry goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Can you say Mr. Ruck is wreaking havoc? Boy, Larry just put a lick on Ray Elgar and just jarred that ball loose. And again, Edmonton's coming up with a big turnover when they need it. That's the third turnover by the Eskimos in this half. He got met simultaneously by Willie Pless and Larry Ruck. We'll take a look at it right here. Ray does a heck of a job of defending off Leroy Blue on a big hit right here. And then Pless and Ruck right there jar the ball loose. Ed Berry, good to see him back in the game, reaping the rewards. And now it's first and 10 Eskimos. From the 39-yard line of the Riders. Pump fake by Allen. He's going deep. Touchdown, Williams! Oh, that, that is beautiful. That is pretty. Little pump fake. Unbelievable. Go ahead, Damon. Tell him like it is, baby. That is pretty. 39 yards, the strike from Damon Allen to Henry Gizmo Williams. First catch of the day, and it's a big one, Matt. Glenn Suter got caught up on the pump fake by Damon Allen, and then he, Damon just utilized Henry Gizmo Williams' speed down the middle, right over the top of Glenn Suter. Can you say dime? Come on, give me a dime. That was right on the money. Yes. That was pretty quick. And again, Damon Allen reaping the rewards of a great offensive line. Doing a heck of a job for him today against one of the most... There's not anybody in three or four yards of Damon Allen on this play. And he does what he does. That is just beautiful there, man. I, I love watching that. I see that a gazillion times. Look at that. That tells a big story in this second half for the Edmonton Eskimos. It certainly does. 14 points off the turnovers the last two series. Larry Rux coughed the ball up for, uh, for Edmonton. And they've capitalized on it in a hurry. Saunders gets out to the 38-yard line. Six seconds remaining to play in the third quarter. This should be the final play of the quarter for the Riders. Holland pushed out to Ed Berry's position with uh, Trent Brown going to halfback. Austin out of the shotgun, under pressure. Looking to set up the screen. Completes to Saunders, still on his feet. Saunders gets the first down. But a flag is down back in the backfield. Holding against Saskatchewan. Ed Berry, we're told, is out of the game with a muscle pull. Obviously, the Eskimo training staff, team doctor, is not wanting to take any chances. This will be the final play of the third quarter. Low snap to Austin out of the shotgun. Completes to Boyko. Boyko knocked out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Robert Holland with a solid hit on Bruce Boyko. The story in the third quarter, Edmonton Eskimos turnovers. They lead 44 to 13. 24 hours for that man, both on and off the field. Spent the night in the hospital having his stomach checked. Austin fires 
incomplete. His intended receiver was Boyko down on the field. Couldn't get up to make the reception. Trent Brown getting a little excited. Got involved in a little defensive play. Look at that. 27-59 to 17-01. Almost a 11-minute difference of time of possession. That's but the big stat in the third quarter, Matt, was the three Saskatchewan turnovers converted by Edmonton. Won a field goal and two touchdowns. Took, took 14 points. They're in, the, they're in the third quarter. But I tell you, Steve, that uh, 11 minutes in differential and as far as uh, time of possession goes really has been the key for Edmonton because they've kept their offense out there and kept Saskatchewan's from uh, doing some damage. Gizmo Williams with a great is the midfield stripe and into Ryder territory, a 49-yard punt and a 31-yard return. Mr. Electrifying Henry Gizmo Williams. That's exactly the word I was going to say. Boy, just electrifying. It's just sheer power and determination there. I think it's emotion. A lot of emotion being felt out there by the Eskimos right now. The crowd's really getting in the game, pumping the emotion, adrenaline, getting the boys going. Gizmo's feeling in here, running over people left and right, running through Boyko, Maddox running through him. Elgard and Charles Anthony finally bring the big guy down. Fourth quarter just underway, 44-13, the score. Favor the Eskimos, they're first and 10. The fake buys some time for Damon Allen. Great play Jerson. by Bobby Jerison. Great play. Jerison's timing on this play had to be perfect because if he had missed, Damon Allen had a lot of space in front of him, but the timing was perfect for Bobby Jerison. It's not easy to do, Steve. You've got Damon Allen, who's, who's probably the most elusive quarterback in the CFL. Bobby's out there weighing 250 pounds trying to contain him, bringing him down like a calf. Bayless getting a little upset in the middle there, disregarding just whoever's blocking him, throwing him aside. Second and 20 plus. As they get to Souls, and Souls comes up just shy of the midfield stripe. Michael Souls just breaking a the tackle there, just bouncing off for Ray Bernard like he wasn't even there, spinning around, picking up some more some extra yardage for Edmonton. Eskimos needed to get to the 44-yard line of the Riders for the first down, coming up well short. Nothing wrong with that. Take time off the clock. Control the football. Up by 31. You'll take that any day of the week. Glenn Harper makes a rare appearance, punting the ball for the Eskimos with 12.59 to play, fourth quarter. Saunders slips, but comes up with the ball. Saunders tripped up at the 23-yard line by Dixon. A 35-yard punt and only a four-yard return. Steve, when I was in Toronto, I really liked this kid, Bruce Dixon. I thought he was uh, a promising young linebacker, Canadian kid who just flies down there with a lot of heart on special teams, and he shows you why he's been able to play um, in Toronto and here in Edmonton and make a big impact for these football teams. Saskatchewan have made a quarterback change. Warren Jones into the game, replacing Kent Austin. The 93 stats for Warren Jones. Let's see if he can do a better job in getting this Saskatchewan offense back on track. Jones with the pump fake, passes over the middle, and it's picked off. Wilson, a flag is down, but Wilson did an excellent job in picking that one off. Interception appearance by the defense number 39. First down. Got a break there. Willie Pless was uh the ball's tipped. It's not live ball. Willie just grabs Ray. Ray trying to slap him out of the way. Doing a little dance there. And that infraction happened for the interception. That's why uh, Saskatchewan retained possession. First and ten. Jones. Complete to Byron K. Williams. That's his first catch of the evening. Got to get that guy involved. He can, he can stretch the defense in a hurry. And what I mean by stretch is he can push the, uh, his patterns upfield. Not one of the better days 
assists for Kent Austin and the Riders offense. But not bad either. He's 28 of 39 for over 300 yards and a touchdown. But I mean, the only thing that he didn't do was put the ball in the end zone. And that's what Edmonton uh, had success doing last time against Austin was they bent, but they didn't break. They let him go up and down the field, but they didn't let him put the ball in the end zone. Jones handing off to Saunders that time, slipped up at the line of scrimmage with a little bit of help from Willie Pless. Ken Austin, you got nothing to be ashamed of, buddy. You played a whale of a ball game. You just came up against a team today that uh, was was wide, was wide for sound. They played very well. They stuck to their game plan, and you didn't have many opportunities offensively because Edmonton's offense been out there most of the day. First and ten riders from their own 49. Jones out of the shotgun. Jones with some time. Completes to Farthing. That is a cannon that that kid possesses. Jones, I didn't even see that ball go through the air. Looks like he released it and Farthing caught it. A nine yard pickup. He reminds me of another quarterback that I've seen over the years. His name is Matt Dunnigan. Throws with a very similar style. <laughs> I Fast wished and I, hard. I wished I threw like that. You do, believe me. <laughs> oh, I've talked to some of your receivers. Less than a yard to go for the first down for the Riders. Jones. Handing off to Saunders. He has the first down with a yard and a half to spare. Larry Ruck wrapping Saunders up. Seems like we've been mentioning him, his name quite often here in the second half and throughout the day. Larry Ruck just having an unbelievable semifinal game. Here. There aren't too many areas in this Edmonton team that aren't enjoying a good day. <laughs> That's a good point, too. The whole thing has come together for Ronnie Lancaster and company. 44 to 13 the score. First and 10 for the Riders. Jones in a quarterback having replaced Ken Austin. Has some time and he was looking for Williams. But Williams was going inside and the pass was going outside. Damian Lyons right on Byron BK Williams back there and Bob was just overshot. Uh, probably a good thing too because Damian had great coverage on BK there. And if you joined us late, the Riders are playing without one of their key receivers, Jeff Fairholm. He's out with a pulled hamstring. Happened on the final play of the first half. Second and ten Riders. Jones using that rifle arm to try and find Narcisse on the far sidelines, but he overthrew him. Narcisse was open. That's a dimension that Warren Jones gives Saskatchewan within this offensive scheme that can't really doesn't possess pushing the fit, pushing the corner a little bit moving the pocket I know he'd love to have that ball back because uh, he had his man wide open he just overthrew him and that brings on the putter Brent Maddich on number seven averaging close to 44 yards he'll try and position this one no he doesn't he goes right to Gizmo Williams Flags are down as Williams crosses the 25 yard line, upended by Ulmer and Anthony. 9.15 to play, fourth quarter, all Eskimos. Damon Allen just handing off that time. Lucius once again reaping rewards. Great offensive line play. Charles Anthony, what? Put a lick on in there, like eight yards downfield, and uh, second and two. Are you a little surprised that Lancaster hasn't uh, gone to Ricky Foggy or Tom Mickey? I would have Damon out of the ball game right now. Uh, uh, you know, he's playing so well, you don't want to get him nicked here when you got the game in hand. Floyd again goes to the outside, picks up the first down, and then some. Good effort from Floyd. Lewis hauls him down. I would, I would expect to see Damon come out of the game after this series. Dermot, Ambrosi, Connup doing the, doing the thing, doing their number. I just can't believe how dominant they've been with this Saskatchewan front four. Well, I saw it against the BC Lions and again last week against the Calgary Stampeders. Eskimos offensive line has done the job. Again, Floyd, this time, tripped up in the backfield. 
And he'll lose yardage on that play. Gerald Bayless getting in there to pull him down. This guy plays 60 minutes of football every time he suits up. He comes to play no matter what the score is. He's going to give you everything he has. He beats Rod Connop up front. And what do you know? Another tackle on the backfield for Gerald Bayless. Getting a little help from his friend, Bobby Jurison. And he made that tackle lying down. This is the vantage point we have here at Commonwealth Stadium, one of the best press boxes in the CFL. A gorgeous stadium. Great vantage point, Steve. I like to be able to call plays up here and run them. Damon Allen running. Get him out of the game. Allen slides for the first down in the arms of Brown. Vincent Donaldson over there. Yeah, that's just, uh, Damon's had a great game. He's put his team up by 31 points. He's continuing to run the football. It's, he's like a thoroughbred. You're going to put him on a track, he's going to run. Get him out of the game. I, I, you know, put, put your backups. Get them some playoff experience out there. Get them comfortable in case something happens to Damon next week. You don't want anything to happen to him right now. 79 yards along the ground for Damon Allen. He's got room and he's got time. He likes to keep it himself again. That's, an, that's, a, that's a shot that he does not need to take there. And that's the risk you run, I think, as long as you keep Damon Allen in the ball game. That's right. Ray Bernard, I mean, he's playing, he's playing hard-nosed football. He's going to try to put a lick in the quarterback. You get an opportunity to do that, you're going to try to hurt him. And I, I, I don't know why Ronnie's not pulling him here. Maybe the only thing I can think of is the fact that he just wants to keep a rhythm with his offensive unit. They're playing so well, he wants to keep that going. He keeps the momentum going into the uh, Western Final next week. And Damon Allen fought so hard and so long to get that number one position and keep it. He feels it's important to play 60-minute football. This time, he gives it to Floyd. He meets Floyd. Dan Rasevich right there in the middle. Stop for no game. But then again, they're running the football. Clock's continuing to run. Everything's working in Edmonton's favor at this point. 5.46 to play, fourth quarter. 44 to 13, the score, favor the Eskimos. And that story tells it all, doesn't it? Yeah, David Pitchard not too happy on the sidelines there. He's played a whale of a football game on special teams. Been mixing it up with Bruce Dixon all day long. Second to nine, Eskimos. The ball just over the midfield strike. Quick drop. Allen puts it out looking for Brown, and he overthrows him. Donaldson was covering Brown step for step on the play. Just missed. Damon threw a fade. It's a good pattern to throw downfield. They uh, put it in an area where either his man was going to have an opportunity to catch it or uh, Donaldson uh, or it's going to be an incomplete ball. And after all he's done for the Eskimo offense this afternoon, Damon Allen not happy with himself on that last play. Well, I mean, he was a yard off. Okay, so, you, you, you know, you want that one back. I can understand that. You want, you know, you're on a roll, you're in a zone, you're having a heck of a football game, and you want to complete them all. Glenn Harper to punt for Edmonton. They were coming, but Harper got the punt away. Saunders at his own 10. Flag is down. Saunders forced back inside the 10 and dropped at the seven yard line by Jed Roberts. 4.45 to play, fourth quarter. Edmonton 44, Saskatchewan 13. And Damon Allen stays in at quarterback. Much to the surprise of me, Steve, I just don't understand that. Ricky and Tom Mickey can hand off the ball just as well as Damon can. Bobby Jurison missing a tackle on Floyd as Floyd is ridden out of bounds inside the 40. Now Tom Mickey is warming up on the sidelines. Maybe word has got to Ron Lancaster at your surprise that Mickey isn't into the game already. Oh, he's probably heard me up here complaining for the last five minutes, but uh, it's a situation where you can't afford for your starter and, and, and such an impact player as Damon's been with this team, especially the last six weeks, to go down with an injury at this point. Get Mickey in there, get Foggy in there, let him hand off control the line of scrimmage. Just as, you know, he can hand off just as well as Damon can. Well, Walling is into the ball game. Floyd is out, but Damon Allen stays in at quarterback. Second and five, and they give to Walling. Straight up the middle. Walling has the first down as he crosses the 30-yard line, yard line. Rasevich there to make the stop. Fresh legs. Do those legs look fresh to you or what? He shot through there like a cannon. Where'd he go, Brian? 
first carry, 11 yards. And Damon Allen is coming up. Thank you. Thank you. What a job. Way to go, Dan. What That's a job he you. has done for the Eskimos offense. And he gets a standing ovation from the crowd here at Commonwealth Stadium. And if anybody deserved it, he certainly does. So now Tom Mickey at the controls. Gives to Walling. Walling still on his feet. Walling down inside the 20. Fresh legs, baby. Fresh legs. Looks good. The guy who's been on the sidelines for most of the game hasn't carried the ball as, as, as much as Lucius Floyd has. Comes in with fresh legs, and you can tell he's powering through tackles out there. And Walling is just saying, give me the ball. Give me the ball. Exactly. 44 to 13, the score. Favor the Eskimos. Three minutes to play, fourth quarter. Damon Allen's day is done. And what a job he has done for the Edmonton Eskimos this afternoon. He gets a well-deserved rest. A rest that Matt Dunnigan thought he should have had a little earlier. 15 for 24. Threw some smart passes out there today, Steve. Controlled it, used his backs out of the backfield. Nickel and dined him and went up top when he had to. It's a great day. Tom Mickey now in running the Eskimos offense. Walling the lone back. Gets the ball for Mickey. Walling. Touchdown! That's just proving a, proving a point right there. That's icing on the cake. Reaping the rewards as Lucius Floyd did for much of the game off the left side. Dumaresk and Blake Termont doing a heck of a job open up for a 45 search off the left side. And Brian does, does what he does best with some fresh legs, cuts through some tackles, and puts the ball in the end zone. I'll tell you, if you had to pick a first star of this game, it might well be the entire offensive line of the Edmonton Eskimos. They have done a tremendous job in this half of the Western semifinal, 51 to 13 Eskimos. Plays an only one pass, capped off by an 18-yard touchdown run from Brian Walling. Here you go, Lucius. Here you go, Rogers. Bunch of Edmonton Eskimos. Yes, sir. Homer at the 20. Got some room to the outside. Homer tripped up at the 40 yard line. JP Esquerdo there to make the tackle for the Eskimos. That's another side of the Edmonton team that's done their work today, the special teams. Chris Mufford probably playing one of his last games as a CFL uh, player. He told me that last night. Takes Brian Walling and gives him a little shot. Could be one of the last plays of his CFL professional football career, and uh, Chris probably trying to get as much of it as he possibly can. Enjoy it, enjoy it to the maximum there, buddy. A long day for the Riders. That pretty well says it, doesn't it? Pass is incomplete. Mr. Proctor's into the game. Saskatchewan giving everybody a look now. I think a little miscommunication on that play. And the reason that Michael Proctor was called up by the Riders and is suited up for this one is simply because Kent Austin had a few back problems, a sore back earlier in the week. They thought they might need a third quarterback. Not in Michael this position, Proctor. though. Not in this position. No, they didn't plan on using him this way. Well, wasn't expecting this to happen. Proctor fires complete. Look at Boyko. This is Boyko. Good effort by Boyko as he gets down across the Eskimos 45-yard line. That's a great effort by Bruce Boyko on that play. You love to see that players. Although you're down by a bunch, you just keep playing hard-nosed football. The flame may be flickering, but it's not out yet. Willie Pless, this is why he's defensive player of the year last year, jumping over people, kept hustling. Game's out of reach, still making plays. A 24-yard pickup. First and 10 riders. Proctor in trouble. Not going to get himself free. Hunter leading the Eskimo charge into the backfield to pull down Michael Proctor. 
And you had a little help there, too. Alvin, you had a little help from your friends there, too, buddy. Great job, Willie coming off the side. Look at that quickness. Misses the tackle, gets back up, gets half a sack there. And that's the first time the Eskimos have managed to sack Ryder quarterback this afternoon. That's quickness at its finest right there. Missing the tackle, getting up, coming back and making a second effort. Second and 12, Proctor having trouble finding his balance, and Proctor eats it for the second time. The ball is loose, but the Riders are going nowhere. Willie's do a little dance out there for us, Willie. You deserve it, baby. Boy, just wreaking havoc on Proctor right now. Willie's feeling it. Edmonton's nominee for most outstanding defensive player, showing you why right there. Riders in a punting situation. Eddie Brown will come in and pick it up. Looking for some running room. He's going back instead of ahead. Finally forced out of play at about the 13-yard line of the Eskimos. Tom Mickey, a quarterback for the Eskimos, gives to Wally. Bayless in on the tackle along with Bernard. Edmonton just trying to chew up the clock here. Take to the house, start celebrate. This game can't end quick enough for both teams right now. Saskatchewan wants to go home, be thankful for the great season that they had. Edmonton wants to get to the locker room, enjoy this victory, and look forward to next week. The Eskimos know that they have another game to play. They'd like two more, but they know for sure they have a date now with it looks like the Calgary Stampeders in the Western Final at McMahon. And Empton won that series this year, two out of three, didn't they? Walling brought down by Bayless on that last play as the Eskimos just simply content to run out the clock. Harper will come on and punt for the last time in this game for the Edmonton Eskimos. At this juncture of the game, you just hope that the players can contain their emotions and uh, not let out any frustration, and you can have a clean wind-up to the game here, because a lot of times you see tempers, What's up, man? people flying off the handle and uh, getting a little out of control, and I hope to see a clean game from here on out. No sense in, uh, in, in getting out of control and losing your composure in this situation. Clock is running, 10 seconds to play. Harper gets the putt away. Taken by Brown, just outside the 45-yard line. Roberts downfield to make the tackle for the Eskimos. Think they're going to prevent defense here, Steve? <laughs> no kidding. Almost picked off by Damian Lyons. They had about eight guys inside the 10-yard line. This one is over. The Edmonton Eskimos dominating the Saskatchewan Rough Riders from start to finish. 51 to 13, the final score. And I don't think there were too many people, Matt Dunnigan, that thought that would happen. No, nope. Ronnie Lancaster knew that he wanted to control the line of scrimmage. This is what his team did today, and uh, that was the biggest factor in the game as far as I expected this to be as easy as it was. Well, you always look for a hard football game, but. Uh, mentally and physically uh, as a whole, as a team, you know, we're prepared to play today. And I think uh, the main concern is with their week off, uh, uh, trying to find out what exactly they're going to do, or any changes. But uh, mentally, we're prepared, and, and I feel very comfortable out there and understanding what they were doing on defense. That former Saskatchewan Rough Rider sitting beside you over there must be feeling pretty good. Lucius Floyd, a tremendous game for you. A little bit special coming against former teammates. Yeah, that's true. I mean, any time that a team lets you go and, and you've been sitting around a practice roster for 10 weeks and you get an opportunity to play against them, I mean, you're going to play hard. And, and it was just fortunate that we came out and we played our type of ball game. Damon, in the last three weeks, you've outscored your opposition, th the other three Western playoff teams, I might add, 143 to 48. You're doing something awfully, awfully well. Well, mainly I think uh, preparation is a big part. Um, right now, I'm, I understand what, what teams are doing on defense. And it's just a matter of uh, just going out there and playing and just reacting and going out there having fun and trying to get the ball to everybody else on our team. Congratulations, Damon. You're off to Calgary. Thank you, Lucius. And uh, let's go back upstairs to Steve and Matt.
51 to 13, the final score here at Commonwealth Stadium this afternoon. The Edmonton Eskimos are indeed bound for the Western Final.